Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. So I'm working on some more paintings and designs for paintings at the moment. In fact, I actually, I'm always doing this actually, always getting ideas for paintings, doing studies, and then sometimes I turn them into bigger paintings. And that's what I'm doing with this one at the moment. So I've done a small mountain painting here and what I'll do is I'll show you the inspiration and idea behind this painting and how I came to design this composition and then the rest of the video I'll show you some of the painting process itself. Now I haven't decided yet whether I'll turn this into a bigger painting and I might paint some other versions of this location first of all and then perhaps decide whether I'll do a bigger painting at the end. So I thought I'd show you some of the process anyway and I hope it gives you some inspirations for your own painting. So sit back and enjoy the video. So when I want to get ideas for painting what I often do is I scroll through my photo reference. Now I've been taking lots of photos over the years and sometimes I'll just spend entire evenings just sifting through my photos and maybe choosing some that I can use to develop into an idea for a painting. I really like these mountains here and this background mountain and I really like these trees as well. This photo I took here was in a completely different location and I really like this as well. I decided maybe I could amalgamate the two which is what I did and what I did after that once I selected those photos is I've just recently got this iPad and Procreate so I'm new to digital drawing but I did a digital sketch with that background and the rocks in the foreground to see how that works. So I'm developing this idea and I'm going to show you the process of the small study that I did. I haven't decided if I'll do a bigger painting. I might even do another painting with that same background but maybe make something out of this water here. But we'll see. Anyway, let's have a look at the painting process. I'm painting on an 8 inch by 10 inch linen panel and this is a medium weave Belgium linen that's mounted to Baltic birch and made by a company called Source Tech in the USA at canvaspanels.com. So I love painting on these, they're absolutely brilliant for small paintings such as this and also plein air paintings. Now I'm using oil paints here and I'm sketching out my composition with a mix of Burnt Sienna and Liquin Original and Liquin's the medium I'm going to be using which helps to speed up the drying time and improve the flow of the paint. Great stuff if you want to get loads of paintings done quickly because you don't have to wait around too long for them to dry. So I'll go over the colours I'm using. I'm using a brand called Blue Ridge Oil Paint and this is an artist quality paint which I'd always recommend even if you've never used oils before in your life as your painting experience will be much nicer. Also there's much higher pigment density in artist quality oils so they even go further. The colours I use for this painting includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Green. So let's get some colour on this thing and the first thing I do whenever I start a painting is I identify where all the dark values and shadows are in the scene that I'm painting. This is something I learnt from painting outdoors as it helps to quickly create a tonal dynamic in your painting, meaning that it's much easier to create the atmospheric perspective. We'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground, but as landforms recede, darks are not as dark and lights are not as light, and that's because the value scale narrows. Now, if you've been watching my other videos, you'll probably hear me say this in most of my videos, and I probably sound like a stuck record, but I think repetition is the best way to learn, and this is how I learn. So, repeating the same concepts. And actually, there's no need to overcomplicate the whole thing, so I've just found that this is a simple way to approach a painting so that you can get your colours and values right. Once those dark values are in, it's much easier to paint the areas in light afterwards and get the saturation of your colours correct as well. Now we'll find our most saturated colours in the foreground, and then as landforms recede, the colours become desaturated or low in chroma. So as I paint the shadows in the clouds, the mountains and the rocks in the foreground, I'm actually using the same colours, a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, 
then a little alizarin crimson which gives the mix of violet tint and then titanium white but all I'm really doing is adjusting the value so for the clouds I'm using much more titanium white in my mix then in the mountains the value is darker so we've got a mid-tone going on here so much less titanium white in my mix and then for these rocks in the foreground, especially in those dark occlusion shadows, I've hardly used any titanium white at all. I always edge my mixtures more on the blue side so that they don't look muddy. Now once I've marked these zones in, I then painted some of these shadows in the trees here. And this is a mix of ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, as I want the mix to have a green cast to it. So once I've got these major zones of shadow in the painting, most of which are in the foreground as the entire foreground's pretty much in shadow apart from the reflected light. But then I go back to the furthest zone away in the painting and that's the sky. So I paint some of those cloud highlights and that's a mix of titanium white with a little burnt sienna which is just gonna warm up the white a bit. Also I've been using these colors in the shadows as well so I'll tie it together. And then for the sky, just a simple mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white. Now one thing I'm trying to do in my painting, as with all of my paintings, is to create colour harmony and we can do this by using similar colours throughout the painting, so try and tie all the zones together. So in my shadow areas, I've mostly been using varying combinations of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson and titanium white, but they're also in the clouds and the sky as well. So next I'm going to work on the area of the mountain that's in the full sunlight and in real life what's growing on here is mostly tussock grass and other kind of low chroma plants that you'd get growing on the side of a mountain. So the colours are not going to be too intense but then as we work forward into the painting and start painting some of the other vegetation we're going to be using much more high chroma greens. So here I want to mix a low chroma green or low in saturation and I'm mostly using a mix of yellow ochre with some burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and titanium white. We really need to make sure that the green is not too saturated here so that it sits back in the landscape. Now as I come forward in the painting I'm going to start working on those trees as well that are lower down the mountain. These are darker in value but also a bit higher in chroma as well. I use a mix of yellow ochre with ultramarine blue, some titanium white and then I increase the saturation turning up the volume of the colour by mixing in some cadmium yellow a little alizarin crimson. And then I can also shift the color with a bit of phthalo green as well, which adds a richness to it. And of course I can adjust the value with some titanium white. So I just mark out the general area of these forests using a number five flat brush. And you might notice that I've been using flat brushes so far. I really like these because you can create some great gestural painterly marks with them. So I mostly use flat brushes through my painting. The brushes I'm using are made by Rosemary & Co. And if you want to get your hands on some Rosemary & Co. brushes, I've put a link to their website in the description box below. Now as I come forward in the painting, I'm just increasing the saturation of that green by mixing in more cadmium yellow, more ultramarine blue if I need it, and even some phthalo green. Also, if my colour's getting a bit out of check and starting to run away with me and that green's looking a bit too neon, for example, I can knock it back with something that contains a colour opposite, i.e. red. So an alizarin crimson or a burnt sienna, cadmium orange, cadmium red if you've got that. Red is opposite to green on the colour wheel, so when these are combined, they cancel each other out, so it will have a desaturating effect. So this is a way you can make your greens look more natural. So here I'm painting the trees and some of the plants that are in the foreground. And as I said before, these are in shadow, so the value of these colours is going to be darker. But I also want to increase the saturation of my greens as well, so I'm mostly using a mix of yellow ochre with cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, then I round off the colour with some alizarin crimson. If I need to make the value lighter, I can mix in some titanium white and I can even mix in some phthalo green as well, which will increase the saturation. 
So I've mostly used varying combinations of these colours to mix the greens. I've even mixed in cadmium orange as well in places. I paint the water in the stream with a mix of ultramarine blue and some titanium white. Also a little bit of burnt sienna to desaturate the blue. Then once the painting was starting to come together I just went across the whole thing and restated the dark. So re-emphasising those dark shadows values in the painting just to give the whole thing more form and definition. Now I wanted to maintain the overall looseness of this painting so I didn't want to go too mad with the detail. But I finish up the blocking in stage just by adding some more details and re-emphasising some of the dark values in the painting. Now during the blocking in stage this is where you want to set the foundation for your painting so that afterwards once it's dry it's going to be much easier to start building up the detail and I like to start off loose because you can keep the painting as a more loose gestural painting or you can add as much detail as you like. So you can make it really detailed if you want but that loose under painting is going to add to the life and aliveness of the painting. So in this instance I tried to get as much work done on the painting as possible so that once it was dry I didn't have too much to do just to complete the painting. Now that the painting's dry I start thinking about adding some detail to it. Now most of the details are going to be in the foreground. I don't want to add too much details to the background mountain because I really don't want to overcomplicate it. So I just added a few little highlights and extra layers to the mountain in the background but I mostly concentrated on the vegetation that's in the foreground, also the rocks and the water. I restated some of the colours in the trees and emphasised some more of those shadows to build up the overall form of the forest that's growing on the side of the mountain. And then I spent the rest of the time working on the vegetation that's in the foreground. I added more shadows and then I started painting in individual plants, things such as forest cabbage trees, ferns and other plants that grow within the forest. Now the thing that I need to keep in mind is that all the plants here are in shadow so I can still increase the saturation of my green but I have to make sure that they're not too light otherwise we're going to lose that illusion of the foreground being in shadow. So I've got a bit of a narrow parameter here with my values. But because it's in the foreground, I can go a lot more saturated with my color. Now as I mark in the details in the plants here, one of the brushes I've found really useful for painting things like foliage is a filbert brush. And I often use number three filbert brushes as this is a good size. Basically a filbert brush, it's kind of like a flat brush, but it's got a rounded edge. And that rounded edge is great for painting finer marks, such as leaves. But you can also still use the broad end of the brush as well for thicker marks. So all up a really useful brush. Now one thing I do with most of my artworks is I save the lightest values and highlights until the end of the painting. Now in this case, it will be the highlights mostly from the reflected light, mainly on the rocks and in the water in the foreground here. So I finish up this painting by adding a few highlights to the water here in the foreground. I've also tidied up some of the rocks and restated some of the shadows. And then there's other little details like painting the distant waterfall that's on those mountains. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about painting landscapes then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com. I've got some free written painting tutorials on my blog and I've also got some full length painting tutorial videos for sale. You can also get instant access to all of my full length painting tutorial videos and more by subscribing to me on Patreon for just $5 a month or $51 a year where you save 15% and each month I post a full length painting tutorial video where I show you how to paint an artwork from start to finish and show you the whole process. I also provide reference photos and written notes as well to go with each video. And of course you get instant access to all of the other videos as well. So my Patreon channel is kind of like a whole landscape painting course. So it's really good if you want to improve your painting skills or even if you're a complete beginner and you want to start painting. One of the things I do with my videos is I teach art theory in the context of the painting that I'm working on so that you can learn art theory as you paint. 
So I've put the links in the description box below. And one last thing, if you subscribe to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to paint some mountain landscapes. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.